So we are talking about the wealthiest black people in the world. And we started off with Mr. Aliko Dankote. We talked about Kanye West last week, if you uh, decide to count him or not. The next person on the list don't is... Have, don't, stop doing that. My bad. My bad. Okay. Yeah, just, we I talked gotta about be... it. It was top shit, and that's what it is. <laughs> if Kanye West was on here, we don't care if y'all not rocking with it. He is the wealthiest <laughs> black man in America, at least as we report it. And that's just what it is. And it's no reason to doubt him at all, because, I mean, he has manifested every single thing... And right, this is, just, he, this is just a pending transaction. Is I'm about to say because if it's not, it will be. So right, hello. exactly. Like this summer, like we already know when the when the clothes drop this summer, the gap you already know you're gonna be buying it. You niggas buying for shoes my baby. Up. I doubt I'll be wearing it. If it's mean, a crack, I don't know. It better be busting Kanye. It better not have the holes in the Kanye. I don't know. Like, <laughs> anyway, we're not talking about Kanye this week. We're talking about uh, Mr. Mike Adenuga. I hope I did that right. And I'm not even going to uh, attempt his full his full name because I just don't want to I just want to be disrespectful, you know what I mean? But he goes by Mike Adenuga. He is a Nigerian man, another person from Nigeria, and a Nigerian billionaire. Billion with a B. Um, so according to Forbes right now, his real time net worth is six point one billion dollars. He is the second richest man. In uh, Nigeria, um, he built his wealth based off of his telecom uh, company, which is called Glow, GLO. Uh, so that's like their one of the major telecommunication networks out there servicing Nigeria, Ghana, and uh, Benin as well. And Glow is short for Globalcom. Yes, short for Globalcom. Yep, absolutely. So that he got into the game really early when it came to um, cellular networks and stuff like that. I think he started like it was around 2003. He um, also is in the oil production company as well, too, with his company called Conoil. It's a Nigerian petroleum marketing company involved in the sales of regulated gasoline, diesel, fuels, and etc. It's so, the shell company of Nigeria. Basically. So, I mean, I'm not going to lie. He dove into two pretty... Pretty good industries, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, Top industries, period. I, yeah, I mean, you in, you in oil and you in communication, I mean, you pretty much, you with, yeah, you good. You good for real, for real. He became a millionaire at the age of 26 years old, which, which is amazing. And he became a millionaire off of, you know, selling uh, soft drinks. <laughs> soft drink. But this just goes to tell you, like, a mindset of a, of a billionaire or a millionaire, somebody who is successful in business, they realize that they can sell anything. You know what I mean? It's not just about the product. You know what I mean? It's about your system. How well can you develop um, a system? So I agree with that. Even yeah. me in business, it's like mm -hmm. having a background in real estate and then going into cars. And now it's like I can I can sell anything. Like now I'm selling booties, <laughs> booty, 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 rocking, rocking everywhere. <laughs> I can't wait till like my shit is on here and it's gonna right. be like she made her first million at the age of thirty hey, uh, selling booties. <laughs> <laughs> so um uh, Mr. Mike at the Nuga, he um like I said, was from Nigeria. He went to school here in America. He first went to uh Northwestern out in Oklahoma where he got his BA and then he got his MBA at Pace University in New York. So after he did that, he of course came back to Nigeria and started his company did you see what he was doing how mm -hmm. he was supporting himself no how was he supporting himself? as a taxi driver yeah mm, mm. look a hustle is gonna get bad I bad, tell it, okay this is like my fucking favorite slogan stay down till you come up exactly. like exactly i know they was trying to shit on him in new york as an african Facts. taxi driver Facts. i wonder if he does like strolls that. through uh new york like coming to america because i know i would <laughs> Oh, man. He's like looking for McDowell's. Yes. <laughs> like, I heard about this McDowell. Where I heard it? about it. <laughs> this is crazy to me, too. He's 67 years old. He's also in multiple other businesses as well, too. He's diversifying his, his portfolio. But 67-year-old Nigerian man, $6.1 billion. Like, that's crazy, man. That's crazy. That's Just cool. last year, he was worth $5.7 billion as of July of 2020. It hasn't even been a year. Right. I just want to let you guys know, too, just, just so you guys know a little bit about Nigeria. This might be some people that might be surprised to see, you know, multiple billionaires coming from a country 
um, that's not America or, or in Europe or in the West at all. So Nigeria right now, guys, is, is one of the wealthiest. No, it is the wealthiest country in Africa. They have a lot of things growing there right now. They got a new city being built called Echo, Echo Atlantic, which is supposed to be like the New York of Nigeria, pretty much. Skyscrapers, you know, shopping, luxury, cruises, like all kinds of nice, you know, luxurious things. Um, also, people should definitely check that out. Check out Echo Atlantic and see what's going on there. There's a lot of opportunity for um, investments and stuff like that there. You already got people like Bill Clinton investing over there. Like, there's people that you just don't expect to see. No, I do. Like, <laughs> come on now. The rich white men want to put their hand in everything. everything. And I know in the back of their minds, like, wouldn't it be something if we could take over Africa? Yeah. Or, or just Don't know. you ever get it fucked up, though. But they, they're you futurists, too, because they're thinking, you know, multiple years down the road. Like, of course. You look at China, look at India now, they have the fastest growing economies and, and also some of the world's largest population. Nigeria is supposed to pass China and India by 2050. It's supposed to have more uh, people living in Nigeria than America in 2050. Like, that's that's crazy to think about. So I'm just, just putting that bug out there now. Like, just think about where things are going, not so much getting complacent in where you're at. Mm -hmm. so. It's so crazy that we sit here and we have these conversations because... I want to cry about how much time I don't have. I remember times where I just cried about how much money I don't have. Uh -huh. It's not even like that no more. I'm just like, why can't I get enough time in the day to really plan and scope out my future for future investments like this? Like, I can't yeah. even wrap my mind around it right now. Like, I can barely wrap my mind around planning this Miami trip. I feel you. Like, feel seriously. You. But I know that eventually I'm going to have enough time to do that. But I, I no longer am crying and pressing for money. It's the time. I think um, what's been helping me lately, I'm still, I still struggle with this, but really scheduling out your day and not starting it in the morning. Like I, I saw a really um, good video that helped me. It was talking about how, how do you put yourself on a schedule and stuff like that? How do you get into a routine, start building these healthy habits? A lot of these people, they start at night. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? At nighttime, you know, before they go to bed and stuff like that, they have their hour of winding down time and do the same thing that they do for the last hour before they go to bed. And then they write in their notes before they go to sleep, like what's the top three things I want to accomplish the next day. And then from that, you know what I mean? Like, cause I, I know for me, like when I check something off my list, I feel accomplished, I feel good. Yeah, me too. You know what I mean? So like if you, if you, you know, the night before can think of three things that you need to accomplish the next day and you accomplish those three things, you're good. You know what I mean? Like exactly. you, you might be able to have some more time. You can schedule in that time if you know like ahead of time, Oh yeah, I need to do this, or, or I need to schedule time in for that. So that that's that's been working for me uh, when I'm doing it. But anyway, that is Mr. Mike Adenuga, the third person on our most wealthiest uh, black person list in the world. So stay tuned to next week's episode to figure out who's number four.